Hey guys, welcome back to another video with InfoSec Pat. In this video, we're going to be installing Windows Core. This is video eight of the series. So we're going to be doing multiple things. First, we have to create the VM in VirtualBox, and then we're going to browse out to the ISO and install Windows Server Core. Then we're going to go ahead and make some changes to the IP address. We're going to assign the IP address of 192.168.199.102. In my case, we're going to change the computer name to Win22-401. And also, we're going to be joining this to our domain so we can manage it remotely and all that good stuff. Right? So let's jump over to VirtualBox Manager so we can get these parties started. All right? So let me just open up my location where I want to put this VM. That'll help. So copy that. So let's go ahead and go up to File, machine, excuse me, Machine, New. I want to say Win22-401. Okay. I want to throw it in this location. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and do Windows Server 2019 is super fine. Next. And then we can set it as four gigs. That should be fine. Probably gonna be a little slow, but it's all good. It's just a server core. I'm not gonna do much. I'm just, uh, it's more of an informational uh, sake. So we have this VM set up. Let's go ahead and just right click on it, go to settings. We have to make some modifications to it. So even though we're not gonna be dragging and dropping, I like to make the change. The system, let's make sure it has two cores so we can have a little uh, speed to it. I think that should be it. So in the network, we have to change our network adapter to Info, uh, Windows Server 2022 YouTube. That's the network that I configured. I think we should be golden, right? Cool, so let's go ahead and hit okay here. And we'll give that a moment and then we can double click on it. And then once this starts up, We'll start installing Windows Server Core. All right, so we're not gonna be using Windows 11, we're using 2022, okay. Exit out of here. All right, so let that do its thing. It's pretty much the same process as installing, you know, the graphical user interface or desktop experience edition, but we're gonna, only have a command line or a PowerShell, but they have something called server configuration or the S, S config tool that we can utilize and we'll be checking that out shortly. Let this do its thing. All right, you see here, this looks familiar, right? So before we did data center with desktop experience, because why not? In this case, we're gonna do standard evaluation. This is not going to have a GUI. As you see here, you're going to manage it with a command prompt and a PowerShell, right? Or you can remotely access it with Windows Admin Center on or other tools. So that's why we installed Windows Admin Center on our file server. And this is how we're going to be able to manage a server like this. Okay. And we'll see that shortly. Okay. So let's go to next here. We'll go to next here. We just do next, next, pretty much the same kind of process. While this is going, before I, because I'm probably gonna cut and come back. So I did make some changes on a domain controller just to have simplistic sake. And I totally forgot to do this in the beginning, but I wanna show you guys so you don't think I'm doing any tricks in the background. So what I did, I disabled the Windows firewall across the domain. So what does that mean? That means I don't have to go in and disable fi uh, the firewall for any server, just so everything can ping, communicate in my lab environment. In the real world, you may not want to do this because that's a little vulnerability. But if you guys want to learn how to do that, I should have done it on video, but we could do it now while that is cooking in the background. So what we can do, we can create a whole new one, but I just applied it to the um, Go to group policy. I just applied it directly to the domain. So the default domain policy 
if we go in here, go to detail settings, and these are the default settings. You can hit show all, and we can see everything that's that's here. You now you can make modifications to this. So what I did, uh, let's see where that is. Windows Defend, right here, right? So the way we do that is we can just right click on the default policy, edit, let's make this bigger. So it's gonna be a computer configuration. So then we're gonna to go to policies. And policies, we're gonna to go to administrative templates, okay? And then administrative templates, we're gonna to go to network, right? So we can expand network. And if we come all the way down to network connections, network connections, and then Windows Defender and Firewall, and let's go to domain profile, okay? So right here, the Windows Defender Firewall protect all network connections. I went in here and disabled this. So this is just something I did in the background, just so I don't have any, any hiccups, any trouble, trying to ping, trying to communicate and all that stuff. So and I applied that to the domain, to the, uh, to the root of the domain, right? So the way we can verify that as well, we can do it, which is called GP result slash R. And this is gonna give me a, you know, obviously we didn't name it something different. So we can see up here, the default domain policy. This is the policies that's applied to this machine and all the machines. We could have made a, you know, in the real world, if you want to have this on certain, certain servers, so you don't have to always worry about anything, you can create a policy, like a new policy, and you can do that the same way, you know, just, I guess so. Let's see how the let's see how server core is cooking. Still cooking. Or all right, so we're good. So let's let's just do this. Let's hit OK here. Here. So okay. All right, so let me go ahead and put my fancy password. Okay. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna switch this to full screen. So we're gonna make some modifications, just like we did in the slideshow, like I was showing, we're gonna change the computer name, join it to the domain, um, do some other stuff, all right? So the first things first, let's go ahead, we can just go down the list here, right? We can change the computer name, let's do that first. Let's do two for the computer name. And we're going to do win22-401, okay? Uh, no, I don't, want to, I don't want to reboot now. So we'll do that later. And the next thing we're going to do is make some changes to the network settings. So let's do number eight. So that's fine. Number one. And we are going to change the adapter address. So number one. And we're going to do 192.168.199.102. And then 255.0. And then my gateway is going to be at dot one. Okay. And then that should be fine. Okay. So now we can change DNS settings. So let's go back in to eight. Why is my, did I do something? Let's try that again. All right, so let's go ahead. I, I don't think it took the settings. Let's go ahead and try that again. Number one. Oh, S for static. Um, I thought I did that, but it should have been a crazy morning. Okay. Zero. Okay, here we go. All right, so we have 102. Okay, enter. Perfect. Now we should be good. So now let's go back into eight. And yeah, now it's 102. So one, and now we have to create, uh, set the DNS server. So like two, 
And our preferred DNS server is going to be our Active Directory server, so 192.168.199.100. And then we can do Google. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is I think that should be it for now. So let's go ahead and reboot because we have to join us to the domain and we want to make sure our, our, uh, yes, uh, the, the, the change of the computer name is good. We, you know, we have, uh, yeah, get that DVD out, ISO. But we'll give this a moment and then let this boot up. All right, so let's go ahead and just do a quick virtual control alt delete. Okay, so we should see this coming up shortly. The S config is loading. Okay, so now we can see Win22 core 01. So let's go ahead and do number one. Let's join this to the domain. So D for domain. And then the name is infosecat.com. And then administrator. Whoop, I spelled that wrong. Not gonna work. Let's do that again. I fat fingered it. That's my bad. All right, so I'm going to put my user. Okay, perfect. Now that should be good. Successfully joined. Okay, so yes, we want to go ahead. No, we don't want to make any computer name changes. So, and that. Want to restart now? Yes. Okay. So while this reboots, we can go. I need to take that quote unquote DVD out. Let's do that now. Devices, optical drive, and remove. Okay. So while that's doing its thing, let's go ahead and see on Active Directory if we have everything good to go there. So if we go to Active Directory, so I did make a servers OU. Let's go to con uh, let's go to computers. Refresh this. We have core now. Let's throw this in our servers OU. Perfect. Now we have that. Let's go ahead and check DNS. Make sure everything is just looking looking promising. Perfect. This is it. All good. Let's go to reverse DNS. And we are golden. So DNS looks good. The last thing we need to do is go onto our file server. Go ahead and just do a quick control delete here. It's bigger. I installed the VMware uh, the VirtualBox tools on here. Maybe I didn't. Wait, I remember. To be honest, I don't even remember. To be honest, let's let's do that because it doesn't seem to be opening full screen. Let's uh, let's do that really quick. Thought I did, but obviously, I'll reboot it later. Let's see now if it goes full screen. Full screen. I don't know what's going on with it, but it's all good. So let's go ahead and open up Edge, go out to our admin center, and let's log in. Twitter. Okay, let's log into here, the admin center. And then once admin center is in here, all right, so let's, uh, let's delete this. Uh, I, I was messing around and I actually messed up some things in the back when I was testing a few things, so ignore that. So what we're gonna do is add a server and we're gonna add win22 dash core zero one dot infosec at Okay. 
credentials needed. Okay, use this credentials. Credentials, the access denied. You need to add your credentials. Okay, add. Fine. All right, so now we have this here. So now if we double click on here, connect using the current ones. This is so annoying. Use this for all the connections. Crying out loud. All right, perfect. So we can look around, we can look at the events. Let's just look at the overview for a second and you'll see server core in Postec Pat. It's the Windows 2022 version, four gigs of RAM, you know, 50 gig drive, it's running in VirtualBox, blah, 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 all good, okay? Let's just go for an example down a little bit. Devices, you can see the devices, computer and networks. See the networks, loads. Remember, it only has four gigs of RAM. It's I, I didn't put too much on it. You can see the IP address. You can see all the details. So admin center is super, super cool. You guys should definitely, if you're a sysadmin, help desk, if you're monitoring, managing servers, having this handy is super cool. Okay, so like remote desktop. We can try to remote desktop to it. Did I enable remote desktop? Let's go check. I don't think I did. Let's go back to our core machine. And I don't think I did. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. This is all how to install core and the configuration of core. Well, let's wait for that. Uh, remote management, no, already remote desktop is disabled. So let's hit seven for remote desktop. For enable. I'm going to do two for less secure. Okay. Now let's go back to our file server. See if we can access it. Oops, I just got things. Okay. Confirm. See if we can connect to it. Not allowed. Let's go ahead and refresh. I mean, re uh, refresh because I just enabled it. So maybe it's going to take a second to a second to uh, to allow it. Okay. Oh, desktop. Okay. So let's try this one more time. There we go. So now we're able to remote onto it. You see that? Now we have full access. We can do whatever we need. And I think that should wrap this video up on how to install server core in VirtualBox. You can do the same thing in VMware Workstation, everything. I just choose to use VirtualBox because it's free and I want everyone to have the experience that they absolutely can do everything on, the, on, on a budget, right? Because I know sometimes people don't have the money or whatnot, but this is how you install server core in Windows Server 2022. Hopefully you guys find this informative. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comments below. And until next time, have a good one.